Hey guys, welcome back to Keys of the Cosmos. I promise this will be a quick video. I wanted to do something on uh, sort of problem solving when it comes to astrography. I had this the other night. I took my time, I did everything I normally do, and I went to take my first uh, test exposure and I had elongated stars. And this is with my Optron mount. Um, yes, I'm not guiding for Mike and all those who are bugging me about that. But even still, uh, you know, generally speaking, I get some pretty good results unguided. And I kind of thought, well, may maybe I should do a video on sort of a checklist of things to problem solve when it comes to you've, you've done your setup, you think you've done everything right, but you're not getting great results. Your stars are off and clearly you're not getting the greatest tracking. What do you do? So let me tell you what I do. So this happened the other night. As I said, I, I did my usual setup. Um, so my setup consists of obviously assembling the mount with the telescope on it. The first thing I do is I balance the scope. So I make sure it's balanced, the deck, the RA, make sure everything's balanced as best as possible. And then I leave it in the home position. Then I turn on everything, my um, ASI Air, all that, I get my, my tablet out, I you know log on, I get on the Wi-Fi, and I start with my polar alignment. So once the mount is balanced, then I do my polar alignment, get it the very best I can. You know, some nights it works, sometimes it's frustrating, the mount's being picky, finicky, um, but I usually try to get it within 0 0.05. Okay, so if you've used an ASI Air, you know what that means. Um, specifically, if I'm using a bigger telescope, the more focal length, the more aperture, um, the more I like to get a, a really good uh, polar alignment. So then the other night I had like a 0 0.03. So that to me is good. I'm happy with that. Then I go back to home position. Uh, I go to my target. I do my uh, focus. Hopefully my scope has had enough time to cool down and to go down to ambient temperature. Do my focus. And then generally speaking, I start imaging. And I let the mount just sort of run for a couple minutes to, to get in sort of tracking mode and make sure all the settings are good on my particular mount. But for some reason, I did my usual, like last time I went out, I did my three minute exposure, looked amazing. This time out, same spot. Um, obviously my polar alignment, everything was gonna vary, but you know, I did all the usual steps and it was off and I couldn't figure out why. And you know, you start getting anxious, you're running, you, <laughs> your target's already there. You know, you may have a limited window. So what did I do? So what I always do is I go back to the basics. I don't take the telescope off. You shouldn't need to do that. Okay, hopefully. But there's three key things I would say that I check. So the first one is, is the mount um, level? Okay, on my particular Optron, I have a bubble uh, on it that shows how level it is. So um, I went and checked. In this case, it was level. But I've had another time when it wasn't. And I thought that I had a level, but you got to remember, sometimes when you level the mount without your equipment on it, it can change, especially if you're putting like foam pads underneath. Once you put that weight, especially with a bigger telescope, it can it can throw off the level a bit. So it's one good tip is to once you put your equipment on, check your level again before you start your initial um, exposure. So check that level, make sure it's good. If it's not, make the adjustments, even if you just have to adjust the leg. Sometimes I don't even want to do that especially once I have the equipment on, because you gotta be very careful. You're, if you're extending a leg and it's a lot of weight, I actually have these uh, pieces of cardboard that I just sort of use as shims and I'll just sort of just lift the leg and put a cardboard underneath and get it better. So that's the first thing you check. Make sure it's level, that does make a difference, particularly when you start getting into bigger telescopes with more focal length. The second thing I do, uh, and so in this case, my level was fine. So what do I check? I check for um, my balance. So it did seem to be balanced when I did my initial setup, but when I checked balance again, it was off. And in particular, my deck was off. So that's your telescope side, not the main arm that swings down. And I was trying to figure out why that was. Now, if you're like me and you're not super technical and really into the details, which you really <laughs> should be for astrotography, but as people know me, I do things the hard way. Cable management can be important because when you have a lot of cables on top of your telescope and they start to shift, they can actually throw off the balance. So if you don't have, you know, your 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 cables sort of tied up and in a position where they're not going to move a lot, 
then that can throw off your bouncing. I think that's what happened when the when the the telescope swung in the go to to the target. In particular, my dew heater has a pretty thick wire, and it kind of swung over the side of the uh, handle to the telescope. So if you can picture that, that's what I think threw it off, and it put more weight on the backside. So when I checked the deck, it was actually off by quite a bit. So what I'm going to do in the future to help uh, prevent that is I have these straps. These are just from the dollar store. They're Velcro straps. And just sort of strap some of my wires to the actual telescope to keep it, keep them from moving. Wires that don't need to necessarily move with the mount you know they're just on top of the telescope and i think that will help but that's one thing to check your balance um that's easy to do uh and it's you know it's a quick fix and oftentimes your balance will be the number one thing um that can you know really throw off your tracking and then what i do well now i go back and check once it's balanced again just like i would the original time i go back and check my polar alignment and again, it was off. And I don't know why that is. Something in my rig, I think, is, there's, is I need to tighten it up a bit. But it was off by quite a bit. Um, if you're, again, if you're familiar with the ASI Air, there's three stages of polar alignment, depending how close you get it the first time. The first one means you're way off. Um, and you need to make significant adjustments to get into the next step, which is more minor. And then, of course, the third step is where you just make very, very tiny adjustments. So I was already back into the second step. So I had to make significant um, adjustments to get back into polar alignment. And sometimes that can also happen when it swings or, you know, when it goes to maybe that in that position, it sort of moves a little bit. It, it, I think that it shouldn't. So I, that's something I need to look into, but it was off by a little bit. So I re-polar aligned and then again, went back to home position and then went to my target, refocused again just to be safe, did my test exposure, and it was fine. So those are three key things. It's obviously best to try and get on the first time, but it just happens. You know, here and there, I have to sort of reset up again. And the only problem I will say is that's easy to say when you have a go-to mount, but when you've just spent, you know, 45 minutes trying to find this tiny little target in the night sky, and now you have to redo that, it's probably going to sway a lot of people and they'll say, ah, I'll go with what I have. And it happened to me in the past when using a star tracker. It is so much easier when you're using a go-to mount because it takes 10 seconds to go back to the target and you don't have to worry about it. So, you know, let's be realistic. It's not as easy for people using star trackers. Once you're set up and once you're, you found your target, you don't want to redo that again. Even though now you know roughly where it is, it's a bit of a pain. So that is difficult. One thing I do want to mention as well for star trackers, when it comes to balancing, I've said this tip before, but one thing I do find that helps is to, when you go to balance, position your uh, telescope roughly where it will be in the night sky that night, okay? Because I do find that depending where your telescope is and where that weight is, it will throw off the balancing. So I always try to, if I'm shooting south, I'm turning that thing all the way around, doing my balancing based on roughly where it will be, then I bring it back and do my polar alignment facing north. So that's an, another tip, tip to help you get better balancing with a star tracker. But those are the th three key things you want to check. If you're not getting the results you want, check your level of your mount. Two, check your balancing. That's usually the culprit, I would say, most times. And number three, make sure your polar alignment is still good. If it's not, make the adjustments. And that should uh, help. If, if it's something as simple as elongate stars, those are the three key things. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that goes wrong with astrophotography. Don't get me started. I'm sure you've all been through it as well. But those are three key things that you want to check. I just wanted to make a quick video. Um, good to remember. And if you know, you're struggling one night, think about those three things, check them, and hopefully that fixes your problems. Thanks, guys. I'll see you on the next one.